Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we, we head straight to a second conversation where we stay with the, Af the uh, strike by ASU. Now, the Academic Staff Union of Universities has said that its members in universities across the country will embark on another strike very soon. The reason for the strike action, according to the union, is due to the failure of the federal government to implement the agreement it signed with ASU since 2009. Now, to broker peace, the union had an agreement to renegotiate, and the renegotiation includes signing and implementation of renegotiated agreement of 2009 and the adoption of university transparency and accountability software instead of the controversial IPPIS. Now, with the constant strike action that dwindled the academic performance of students as learning is suspended for a very long time, and uh, this is not very good, we will be looking at the implication for the educational sector. We have an educationalist who joins the conversation. And the big question we're putting out is what is the way forward for the Nigerian student? We do have Professor Fawe Wimi joining the conversation this morning. Good morning, Professor Yomi. It's good to have you join us. Thanks for having me. All right, so um, let's share your thoughts now. With the constant strike, I mean, this is not the first time the Nigerian um, student and the educational sector would be witnessing strike from ASU. And we already know the story. It's the fact that it's a big deal for the government to keep to the agreement and implement the agreement, uh, the broker with uh, the union. And so what do you think would be the way forward now for the Nigerian student? What do they have to do? OK, uh, thanks for having me. Morning again. Um, it's unfortunate uh, we have had a strike. It's become a strike too many. Um, in 20, the last time National Arts went strike was in 2020. Uh, and they went on strike. They started in March and ended in December. That's nine months of strike. Um, after that strike, there was a, an agreement with government. And we were very grateful that throughout 2021, uh, there was no national strike. And then we in February and then we are already getting threats of it. It's unfortunate because what has happened is that we have had a system. I mean, we have a system problem where we've had governments reneging on this agreement or sometimes signing an agreement just to get us back to work without any serious commitment to getting things uh, really following up. On the other hand, too, ASU itself sometimes plays the game that he knows is not going to win. Everybody knew that when ASU had gone and signed the agreement in 2020, everybody knew that government was not going to implement it. ASU knew it wasn't going to happen. But you know what happens typically is that when ASU goes on strike, they stay too long, there's a lot of social pressure on them, and government decides to release some money to show some commitment, and they, they go back to work. And, and we're back to where we are. So from 2019 to 2009 to the strike, I mean, this is like the fourth fifth strike on that agreement. Uh, we're back to where we are. And it's unfortunate for the educational system, the students lose time. Uh, there's a business case where ASU goes on strike. ASU does not eventually lose when they go on strike. That's one fact we need to understand. Uh, the greatest loss comes to the students and second to the educational system. For ASU, it's not like that. And while we have the discussion about national ASU, remember some school ASU are currently on strike. So back to Meolo University Lake, for example, started a strike in the last couple of days. So the strike has been on in various schools. Uh, it's just that they have sent to IT needs to very well. And the strike in other criminal invest, for example, is over the sharing of the money that was gotten based on the last strike. <laughs> so the two two factions in the university are fighting over the formula. So you, you, you see a system where lecturers go on strike to ask for money, which happened in 2020. Government released some money. Now, government has released the money and how to allocate the money among the academic staff in the university. The formula is causing like, another crisis that staff has also gone to strike. So, we have a system where ASU believes the only viable tool it has to make a difference is strike. And, and, and that's a big problem for me. As academicians, you are expected to be creative, to be innovative, to solve problems, not to complicate the problems using strikes to force uh, for the other government. Uh, um, it, interesting um, uh, that you've talked about the case in, in the OAU. Um, some people have raised concerns and have called ASU out on the fact that uh, even though they try to give us some 
you know, uh, welfareist reasons, you know, why they go for strike. They will probably insert one reason in their list of, of demands about the uh, state of facilities in the school and all that. But the, the, the overriding or the underlying reason why they go on strike could be for financial reasons and what is their due financially in terms of remuneration. And some people feel it's all about money and that is a problem. Do you think that's a problem? Yeah, I mean, as soon as demands, uh, typically when that school goes on strike, they come with a list of demands. On average, between, they, go, they don't go on national strikes without having a list of between 6 to 12 issues. But what typically, I mean, that's why I call it a game. It's a game between both sides. So there's a list of 12 things. So they'll tell you, for example, uh, they want um, uh, funding for the university system. They may say they want a new software to pay teachers in the case of Utahs versus IPPIS. They may say, for example, that they want uh, money for this, or they may say dissertation panel. So most strikes by us who ask the financial, as three categories, the financial benefit to the ASU members, that's one. Two, the financial release to the educational system, the university sets to preside, and thirdly, some other issues. But what the, the game both sides plays is that once governments here sees those list of 8 to 12 issues that ASU brings for Government decides to agree to most of them, right? But what government quickly does is to pay the financial one that goes to the members of ASU. And once they get the alerts, like they call this in Nigeria, once alerts are sounded, they come up the strike. So at the end of the day, both sides know that they are just playing the game. But you know what is very unfortunate is the fact that there is no reason why ASU will not go strike. They don't lose anything. Let's be very real. So let me give you the case of 2020 strike. 2020 strike, they were not paid for months. Uh, at the end of the day, they eventually got the nine. They were they didn't go to work for nine months of the year, and by December they all got their money back. In some schools, it was to January, February, but they got their money back. That's one. So you didn't work for nine months of the year, and you were paid for nine months. Nine months is what it takes. To conceive a baby and give a baby to tell you what can happen in nine months. This they work for three months in a year and were paid for nine to twelve months. Now, what happened is that if you check the record 2020 December and 2021 January, most universities had massive promotions. I can give you the case of University of Elon, I can give you the case of very investor credit credit. So guys have been on strike for nine months in 2020, and in December, January, they got promoted. They got their salary, they got a promotion, hey, life is good. So the question is that you come to work every day, you earn a salary at the end of the month. So why does not come to work for nine months of the year, gets paid at the end of the year, and also gets the promotion? If you are in the shoes, won't you go and strike again? Okay, so, but now that this sounds like a transaction, and this has been going on for a very long time, uh, you have rightly mentioned from your position. Unfortunately, we weren't able to have, you know, representatives of the union because they're actually stated categorically that they're having series of meetings and therefore will not be able to attend to us. But it's a good thing that we have you here. It's business, like you were saying, they might just be benefiting. Life is good for, uh, you know, the members of this union. But for the student at the end of the day, which will make up the productive population or uh, whether or not they are productive is another question, which, will, which makes up, you know, um, the, the working population or part of the economy. Uh, where does this leave them? Now that they are not, because it's not working for their good, what will now be the way out? What do they, what do they have to resort to? What should they resort to? It's the question. I mean, it's a very unfortunate situation because, you know, like the proverb, Fabia saying goes, when two elephants fight, the ground that suffers. Um, he, at the end of the day, let's let's first remember that even without strikes, the learning has not been very effective. There are university students, for example, that in their laboratory there are no reagents. They are the, the, the equipment they used to teach them is not available. So that's possible. I mean, um, I was discussing with a dear friend who teaches in one of the foremost universities in Nigeria. Uh, and will, it will tell his students concept and tell them, go to your library to get it, go to your library. They won't spend two in that. So the books are not really in our library. So even without the strike, the learning is not effective. Now, with the strike, you have learning that is not effective, that is not also elongated because students stay longer. So students are the ones that bear the bronze. And perhaps sometimes I ask myself very sincerely, is there really a plan by ASU? Because at the end of the day, is ASU indirectly trying to encourage more people to send their children either abroad or send their children to private schools? 
Because the business case for sending your child to a public school has already been defeated. If you know that if your child gets admission to study four years in the university and it's not guaranteed, and you can get an affordable private school, why why would you send your child there? So sometimes I ask myself, is there really a grand plan for for by by absolute or an unintended consequence by household to get people to go to private universities? Uh, because that's that's the implication. So for the students that are there, uh, I don't know what they can really do because unfortunately, as we won't listen to the students, um, uh, it's just a case of they have become stranded in the system. But maybe the question, our experience, and the sincere question is: Does it really make no business sense to keep sending your child to a public school that the strike can be national, can be zonal, or can be based on the university? And you know, we remember that popular song in Nigeria: "Time and money." When your child can't graduate on time, uh, you waste time in school. By the time your child graduates, instead of spending four years, they are spending six years. He goes out and the employer is telling them wanted graduates of mass form or engineering not longer than 24 years. Well, your child has but Professor, Professor Yomi, I'm sorry to interject. Because we're, we're looking out, this would always continue. Uh, Kofi would always say I'm a product of, you know, strike. I've, I've witnessed that uh, for six months and it, it can be, you know, very, very uh, damaging. We, we don't have time. You are saying that uh, maybe parents should begin to consider sending their kids to public or children to public, I mean, to private schools, if, if, if that's what you're saying. But you would also want to agree with me that not everyone can afford that because of the cost of, you know, private universities in Nigeria. So the question now again is what will this student do? Because you find out that a lot actually happen when this student do not have anything to engage. I mean, it's worse off like you have mentioned that the system is not effective enough and then the fact that they don't have anything to engage. So what is really, really the way out? Or would you just fold the arms? Because that's also a threat to national security amongst other issues. Okay, I mean, you make a very great point. And that's what people say when this issue about parents. So, but let's be very, let's be, let's be very, let's use data to take the decision. Not all private universities are expensive. So there are three categories of private universities. There are the expensive ones. There are the medium-sized ones. But there are also universities, private universities, that are affordable because specific programs are free. So whether university, private university, for example, in, in the south, in the north central, for example. That has made it tuition free for anybody that wants to study agriculture. There's a university, private university in those states that make it tuition free for anybody that wants to study religious studies. So if parents want to do the due diligence, they will realize that there are schools where the tuition is either reduced or affordable. And then you have some religious based uh, private universities that give this kind of account to their parents. But the question we need to ask ourselves is that at the end of the day, is your child getting education? Now, so for the students, so that's for the period. For the student who is going to be affected by this approach, right? In today's world, you have access to information and education, whether it's through Coursera, through Udemy, through YouTube. What I would just advise is, if your strike ever happens, don't be idle. Don't just stay at home or don't just go party. Start to learn online what you should learn and start to get value for yourself. Um, if you want to learn to code, if you want to learn a new language, or if you actually want to learn on that and that's your same sector, you can. So no child should say, no student should say, because of Asu Strike, I can't learn. That's what they can do, because it's a bad situation. That's, you can't make Asu go back to work once they decide the national strike. And so that's what I, so I think it's a question of what would parents, could parents do for those coming from currently, um, uh, they have the choice to still go to the public university. If you remember, this is 2022, some schools have not completed admission based on 2021 um, UME. They have not admitted the students, and we're already in 2022. Jump will start getting through in the next couple of weeks, and then there is a strike. You ask yourself, are you even making the best choice for your child if that child goes to a public university? But if that child is already a public university, you need to have an alternative learning plan where this child can learn on its own if the ASU strike goes or not. We're not too sure whether ASU will really go on strike eventually because sometimes I feel that they just want to get social pressure on government to act. And that's why on Monday, for example, they declare that all schools should declare what to be they, they ask them to do this. It's just to get more pressure on government. NIRE, the Nigerian Entire Religious as well, Committee, has not to need the president to appeal for us. So there's still some things happening on ground. So it's not impossible government may want to do something this week Though I remember hearing the ask president saying they have not called them for a meeting, but hey, government knows how to do that. Once you place a call, they do some alert business, they were back to the game is on. So if the game is a game. Hmm. 
Well, um, well, we'll be watching this space. And of course, um, as you um, as said, the federal government has till February 12, 13, um, when they will be having their National Executive Council meeting at the University of Lagos to redeem itself or possibly face a strike. Um, let's see how it plays out. But I want to thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, uh, Professor Fawi Imi, uh, who is an educationist and who has joined us to give us expert and insightful analysis of the situation. Thank you very much for your time. Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Mercy, um, uh, you, you can't stop, you know, I don't know if you're proud of the fact that you spent six months at <laughs> home, but the prof said, you know, you could have done some online, um, online studies, but you chose to go look for money, you know, you chose which to go is make a, money. Which, which is actually not really you like bad. You like money, you know. No, okay. everyone <laughs> needs it. But the most important thing is that, uh, you know, stay productive and don't stay idle, just like the professor has actually mentioned. We're hoping that we get to a point where, uh, just as we evolve with our democracy, we hope that the educational sector as well would also evolve. We hope so. That's it so. for the show. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. And just subscribe to YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Goko. Have a fantastic day. And my name is Kofi Bertel. We'll return tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Good morning.